All right, guys, welcome back to another amazing show. This is the Real Estate Uncensored Marketing Roundtable. Now, we have legends in the house. We have Mr. Gene Volpe, we have Mr. Nick Sackis, and we have the ever, ever legendary Miss Bernice Ross. We are going to have a lot of fun. We're going to talk about video conference calls. We're going to talk about how to lead uh, digital meetings, how to do it successfully, how to make sure that it's successful for you in all ways, shapes, or forms. But, you guys, before we get into that, <laughs> We got to get into our countdown. All right, there it is. There is our countdown. We are blessed and honored to have everybody around us today. Guys, we are, you have people that with you, be able to share some knowledge with you that you would not be able to find anywhere else. If Gene would not stop messing with this mic, that would be super awesome for the audio engineers uh, on the on the editing side. Uh, but Mr. It's, Gene, Bobby, how, y'all, how are you? Buddy? This mic's not even hot yet, so don't even tell me you heard anything. Well, I think you're hot, so I think that's a good thing. Oh, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, Speaking of hot, where's Jake Wolf? Uh, he doesn't want to hang out with us today. He uh, has a home inspection. He's selling his house. So he's, he's, he's going to be out, out, out of, uh, out of office today, but he's probably watching and listening. So Jake, we love you, Bubba Cakes. We'll see you on the next show. Nick Sackas, how are you? The ever shrinking man. Doing fantastic. Feel a little bit under the weather. We got a coal rolling around our house over here in the, uh, Sackis Casa, but, uh, all is well. Nice, man. Well, make sure that you uh, drink lots of foods, take the vitamin C's and get some vitamin D and call it a day. Helps you uh, lose weight when you're not hungry. Well, yeah, it's amazing how that works, yeah. right? Or if, if you have diarrhea, one of the yeah. two. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> we don't know. But on that note, we have Bernice Ross. Guys, if you don't know who Bernice Ross is, she is my business partner. She and I publish uh, articles on Inmint every single week. We're ranked in the top five consistently. Uh, she's been writing for them for the last 19 years and change, plus a lot of other organizations and, and things that she's involved with. But she just wrote a book, and we're going to go over this book together. And it's talking about how to lead well, Bernice, I'm going to let you talk about it because, because I'm going to screw this up. So it, yeah. let, let everybody know who you are. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, and first of all, I just want to say, I just got accepted to speak at NAR on uh, how to create listings where there are none. So I'm so excited about that. So I'll be uh, be there in San Diego in November. I want to plug that because I'm so excited about the opportunity. Nice. Uh, I've been in the business for over 35 years. I run the training for 4,000 agents in California. I've been writing for Inman for 20 years. I was active agent for 20 years. I've been a broker for going on 35 plus years. So anyway, I've been around for a long time and I've done I've, um, my clients include the California Association of Realtors almost all the big companies so um, I you know Texas Association but you know we're in the training consulting and coaching side of the business but I want to talk about my new book which is lead great virtual meetings my co-author is my husband Byron Van Orsdale and he, we started leading virtual meetings back in the 1990s. That may be before some of you, it's probably when some of you were still in grade school from what I can guess. But the bottom line is um, we've been in this space for many years. And what's fascinating is you know, saying, well, gee, we're leading these conference calls. Well, what does conference calls have to do with today's meetings? Well, how, how many times have you been on a virtual meeting and you see someone join as audio only or, um, you know, and we were just talking about this uh, before the show started. I was talking to the gal who runs my company. Her name is Shane Bullen. And Shane's telling me, she just says, oh, yeah, you know what's going on out there? A lot of people, you know, their uh, their uh, video will go down. And this is caused by a bandwidth problem, which we can elaborate on. But uh, anyway, their video goes down and they think. No one can hear them. And in the meantime, they're swearing about the video and having a fit. And it's just like, and they don't know everybody is hearing that. So by the way, just as a clue, one of the big takeaways from us, for those of you who lead video conferences, Zoom meetings, whatever kind of you know video conference calls, whatever that you're doing, make sure that you have your participants muted. I can't tell you how many times we've had people in the bathroom hearing things that we do not want to hear. <laughs> So uh, in any event, um, just a couple things on this. 
So, you know, you want to have people come, you know, if you want to mute them and then unmute them, if, you know, depending on what kind of meeting you're doing. So you avoid a lot of these problems. But then the other thing is, and let me tell you uh, just uh, something that happened to me personally several years ago. I was re I was leading a big webinar for um, NAR, 1,400 people on, on the call. And it was, um, and uh, we had a thunderstorm. I lost my video feed. But I continued with the meeting audio only because I could dial back in off my landline at the time, a different system, or could have been my cell. And because I did a handout ahead of time, NER told me almost they had almost no drop off. So the kind of takeaway here is your audio is the most important part of your meeting. And you want to be focused on how to make the sound quality the absolute very mess. The very best, not a very, not a very best. Oh, I have a very mess. I'm like, yeah, uh, don't think mess. Right yeah, that was it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, guys, any questions or comments on what I've just said? Because I know you've all had your experience, Greg. We were talking about uh, this before you got started today. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, and I want to hear from Nick and Gene because these guys are masters when it comes to audio. I mean, Nick, you have like how many microphones in front of you right now? Two. I, mean, it's I, I have a primary and then a fail safe in case something happens. And when it comes to your opinion, when it comes to audio quality in meetings, what, where would you rank that on a scale of one to 10? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, you can't get anywhere. If people can't understand you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, having that plan in place, I think what Bernice brings to the table, what she probably talks about in her book, which I haven't read yet, um, unfortunately, but I just found out about it today. So it's just, I will. It's just, on, it's just on Amazon right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll find it on Amazon. Amazon but <laughs> it it goes back to having a plan, right? You have a plan in place. Like she said uh, before, having a handout that everybody gets prior, you know, having that plan in place is a big deal. It's not just being able to have a thousand people on a call and you hop in your car while you're eating your lunch uh and and trying to host an event right there's got to be a little bit of planning going into place and audio for sure is probably the one of the most important things yeah like gene came in uh to the to the show eating a quesadilla from some sort of gas station that you guys you all enjoy down there he, so he came he came in hot so that would have been a good example not 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 to do that <laughs> but that's gene style too right gene had <laughs> so gene has a plan right that's part of his plan <laughs> so that's a whole nother area of marketing. Nick, I want to circle back to what you said about the backup mic. You know, here's something that works really, really well yeah. as a backup. You know, and, 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 and guys, everybody who's listening to this right now, she's holding up uh, earbuds from, from Apple earbuds. Uh, yes. that she and the in. reason is, uh, first of all, these things have incredibly good noise reduction. And I'm going to turn it over to the three of you on professional mics. I've got a professional mic that my husband ordered. This is not my my um, area of expertise, but I can tell you from someone who's led virtual meetings since the 1990s, audio is everything because if people cannot understand what you're saying, they are gone. So what mics do you recommend? Um, you know, the three of you certainly are in this place. I think we're all using similar mics. Gene, you're you're using the same mic as I am. So what are you using? He's using silence. Today, <laughs> his, his <laughs> mic is <laughs> silent. Really important rules about leading. <laughs> silence yes. is silence. This is the most important thing about this. Um, guys, one of the things that Did I you use... hear that? No. No, we didn't hear you. Yeah, you cut out. Oh, dude, it was a toilet flush. Oh. Oh, no, we didn't hear uh, your poop. -poos. So much for the mics. Yeah, no, I'm using the Audio Technica ATR uh, ATR 2100. All right. Yeah. So we can get really geeky on microphones if you want to, but this, there's different styles. That That is a really good mic. I actually have the same one, too. I've been using it for years. You don't need – it's a USB-style mic. Mine's plugged in um, with an actual XLR cable. You don't need that, but it'll plug in right in your computer. You can't really kill these things. They don't need phantom power. Um, they pretty much last forever. They're metal construction. And this guy, like what Greg just held up, I think is $75. Like if you really wanted to invest, right. Uh, doesn't cost much where if you get into more expensive microphones, they need phantom, they need power, right? They need, um, an actual audio interface. So now you're not just buying the microphone, you're buying an audio interface that'll plug into your, um, computer via USB. Uh, so there, there's different options anytime. And, and going back to what Bernice said, 
the fail safe is, is headphones, headphones that have a microphone attached to them. So I don't have, let me see. I, have I don't have one right in front of me, but on the actual, if you look at the bottom of those microphone jacks, so this is very important. People ask me this all the time. There's three prongs or there's three little lines on that microphone jack. That'll let you know that it has a microphone on the bottom. Those are the three lines. Okay. Um, Gene, you got one in your hand. Cause I'll, I'll see people that'll plug in just headphones. It doesn't have the microphone and they think they're on, but there's no microphone attached. So if you look at the bottom, oh, you're talking about here around the ring. Yeah. The bottom connector, there should be three lines on that connector that lets you know there's a microphone on that headset somewhere. Cause sometimes mm -hmm. they're up in the ear when it comes to actual audio though, the reason why those headphones sound so good to people, even though that's like a $20 item is cause that mic is close to your, to your mouth. So the best microphone is a microphone that is as close to your mouth as possible. And when you have those microphones that are that close, it actually uses your body as shielding, right? So as far as outside noise, that's another reason why they do so well, because they're so close to you and all really? the noise behind you, they don't pick up because you're in front of it. Whereas a mic like this is a little bit hotter and it'll pick up ambient noise a little bit different, right? Well, that one actually. So that well, one actually doesn't. So you're getting into another step. Well, step. it does. It'll pick up more than a completely. Well, that's that's true. Yeah. That part's true. But but there are different kinds of uh, what are they, condenser mics. Condenser, and, um, cardioid pattern. Like this is a cardioid pattern, which means that like, we're getting geeky. It yeah, will. Real geeky. <laughs> yeah, but it's it important. Will, though, but it's important. Yeah, you, you speak into the microphone here. So it picks up everything from the front. But in the back, it'll reject anything coming from behind to a percentage and that's still going to pick it up but it's much better Nick, I, I actually think you're actually not coming through that mic right now no I'm he's not. not i have a different mic uh, what so what what, what what what's the other mic so the other one is it's a pencil mic and let me hold this one up you've been you've been pimping this one for a while now you love this one yeah it's a cool mic this you guys can i'm probably gonna be real hot Ooh. Yeah, you are. What oh, using, that sounds like, really kind of deep. A boom mic. Wonderful. <laughs> right. So you can you can use this as a as a boom mic. It can be farther away from your face, right? So I don't have a microphone in my face. And that's another thing with video conferencing if you want to get geeky. Right. Oh, so exactly. I have I have this mic. I should be showing up here, right? Oh, yeah. that sounds this good. Is, this is more of a podcasting style, a little bit deeper voice, a little bit more intimate. But now now I'm hiding behind my microphone. I don't I can't visually build as much of an engagement with you just because this is in my face. It's very subtle. Like when you get into actual doing presentations like this matters. This is cool for a, a podcast. But if I want to build a communication and look you right in the eye and not have anything between us as audiences, it's best to have an off camera mic, whether it's a boom or you can have the lavalier penciled behind your shirt. So that you can really build that communication with people. So it, there's there's a science to so, it. So you're yeah. saying that Gene's been doing it wrong forever? No, because you got you record this as a podcast, so it's still it, there's different lanes for it, right? There's different reasons for everything. It's hmm. not well, good or bad or indifferent. I just I choose this over because well, I, I want to. So I I have switched to the ATR. This is the ATR twenty five hundred. Yeah, is a, a table mic. So it's like the same things you see on late night TV shows and stuff like that. So it's on the edge of, the, of, of, a, of a desk. Now there's variations on this. And Bernice, I want to get into kind of, I know you've covered this in your book and I want to get your opinion on this. Um, you know, when it comes to microphones, have you found that running a video conference or anything like that, is there a specific style of, of mic like Nick was just describing, which I honestly did not know the difference, which is fascinating to understand the psychology behind that. Well, the, you know, the it's not so much the style of the mic. The one thing that you're looking for is noise reduction. And part of what you need to pay attention to, I mean, you know, uh, you know, you could use your earbuds for, for, from your phone if they'll plug into your computer or whatever device you're using to lead your meeting. Um, you can use that and the sound quality is going to be excellent. I have to say, I've had them out, out there blowing uh, with a leaf blower five feet from where I'm sitting and it didn't come through because the noise reduction in my earbuds or on my phone is so good. So you're looking for noise reduction. And specifically, you need to pay attention to the room that you're in. One of the things that people do is that they'll lead in a room where they've got, uh, I've got all tile floors and, and I have, you know, I have an area rug down without that rug, without my blinds drawn and, 
you know, all these different things to soften the sound, it sounds like an echo chamber in here. So one of the things you need to do, no matter what mic you're experimenting with, say that you're leading on Zoom, all these other meeting platforms, they let you test your mic ahead of time. Listen in to see how it sounds. And then if you're getting an echo, then you need to look at softening. I've got some baffling in back of you know my computer here, so that renew that reduces the sound. I've got noise reduction on my main mic, um, but you're you know it's whatever you choose. Test it and see how it sounds. That's the first thing. Also, hey guys, how many times has this happened to you? It just happened at the beginning of the show. Gene thought he was talking, and all of a sudden nobody could hear him. Right. Mm hmm. Well, that's be that's because we kicked him out of the show. Bye, Gene. <laughs> Bye, Gene. Every it's like a it's like a tradition one, once every time. Uh, so let's talk about what what Bernice was just talking about a little bit too, because I think people sometimes misunderstand a real simplistic uh, explanation as to why there is echo a lot of times, right? So the earbuds are good for echo because what happens is typically if you have if your microphone is also near your speakers and you have the audio coming out of your speakers, what does it do? It goes back into the microphone. Mm -hmm. So there's a delay and it just kind of goes like this in circles. So the other thing too is with headphones, you're only hearing the audio through your ears. There's no audio going back into the microphone. So that's kind of why. So when somebody says to you, we're getting an echo, start thinking about how you can get the sound lower or mm -hmm. the microphone away from your speakers. Mm. Gene, I want to jump in on something you said, and this is one of the most important takeaways from the book. Um, there are different levels of conversation that you can have. So right now I'm talking at you. I'm not quite, you know, I'm kind of in conversational space, but when I'm in your ears, I'm in intimate space. Mm. And this builds more connection. And what we have found, you know, for we've been, you know, my husband and I have been co business coaches for 20 some odd years. And what we found, people would say they want to have face to face meetings or whatever. And we'd always say no, because you, you know, and this is true for conference calls as well as video conferences. You get to it sooner, quite frankly, when there's audio only. Now, with, you know, with the way the meeting uh, environment is right now, you know, we're doing the video, but when you have that in, you know, you have those people in your ear, you're in a more personal space. And the other thing that takes place, and I want to warn you about this, if you're using the, you know, like the Apple earbuds, anything that's Bluetooth, what you, you know, Greg, yours are wired. Why yes. is the problem? If you're using something that has to go over Bluetooth into your computer, into the system, and now it's going to be broadcast across Wi-Fi, back out on more Wi-Fi, you're, de you know, you're getting a degradation on that. And I don't have to tell you guys how many times do your cell phones or your, you know, earbuds cut out. You know, the the Bluetooth ones they cut out all the time. My my wired ones never do. Yeah, you know, no. Every every single time we do an interview on the podcast here with someone who's doing you know, wireless uh, headphones, <clears throat> the audio sucks and they drop out at some point because they uh, one didn't charge them, two they're just not uh, you know, aware of kind of how 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 they're going to operate. And so we've had massive audio issues in past shows with that. So I completely agree. I mean, if you're going to do you know earbuds, guys, get the wired ones. I know it's cliche. I know it's old school. Old school. You know, hashtag that one. But I mean, the whole point is that like get the best possible quality of audio uh, that you can get. And then that's what that you'll be able to convey your message easier and cleaner and allow people to stay tuned to you. So I know we've kind of talked about audio and we beat that one into the bush. If anyone wants to kind of uh, talk more about that, that's great. But Bernie, so let's talk about some other stuff in your book that you're, that, that's coming out tomorrow um, and kind of some other things and how people can lead a really successful meeting on video using audio. Well, the audio is the most important thing, you know, and then the, you know, for us, and one of the things that makes your show so effective is that you have a conversation. You know, the worst, the kiss of death is somebody sitting there talking to you for 30 minutes straight. And I mean, there are some people who can carry it off. 
Mm -hmm. But people are used to listening in conversations. So I would suggest having a co-host. If you are interviewing someone for your business, say you're talking to the president of the PTA or the football coach about the upcoming football season, whatever it is, if you're having those kinds of meetings that are designed to help clients or, or to serve your community in some way, make sure that, you know, the person you're interviewing, like they said, has that, but you want to be you want to be able to engage them in a conversation. And this means as a leader that you have asked, you put together a series of questions to ask before you come come in. I think we, you know, we kind of talked about, we alluded to having a plan before you start leading. Now, part of your plan needs to be a way to deal with technology problems. And the biggest one is, and I had this happen with a I had two friends of mine who were leading uh, an all day conference and I was a guest and both the hosts got bumped off the meeting and I'm guest, and now I'm trying to hold this meeting. that has got a couple hundred people in it together, but you need to have a plan for when that happens. So, or, you know, one of the things that's really common, your audio or your video goes wonky. A lot of times that can be a bandwidth or an internet uh, issue. You need to look at ways to reduce the bandwidth usage. If you're leading a meeting where you've got a lot of people on it, the first thing you want to make sure is who else is around you, either in your office or in your home, who's sucking up bandwidth. And it can be your kids who are sitting there playing games online. It can be someone who's watching something on TV that's coming across that. You want to get any, or, or you can, you know, I have the CEO of one of the big franchises in the country I was interviewing and she kept cutting in and out because she was in her office and her office was the most distant one from where the hub was. Mm -hmm. So all of her agents were sucking up the bandwidth. So she wasn't coming through clearly. She ended up having to go home to really, we had to reshoot the entire thing. But the point being is, if you're having bandwidth problems, what can you do to eliminate those? First of all, if you've got kids, have them either jump onto their cell phone connection without Wi-Fi. If you're coming across the Wi-Fi on your uh, on your particular um, um, on your phone or whatever you're using to leave the meeting, so you want to limit that that Wi-Fi connection. Uh, the people using that. Uh, also, if you get bumped off log back on, if you start having any kind of problems, sometimes you just get kind of a bad internet connection. And if you log off and log back on, that's one of the simplest ways to clear problems. It's like rebooting your computer. And also one of the most important tips I want to give you, if you're leading for someone else, uh, Jean sucks up bad way, okay. <laughs> if you want, you know, if you're leading for uh, a big group or something and it's video, be 30 minutes early, about 20 to 25% of the time you're going to have technology problems. And for anybody who's a trainer or a broker owner who or manager who leads meetings that may be listening to this, getting on early allows you to reload the software if you have to. I mean, I've had, to, you know, I can't tell you how many times I had to reload, go to webinar or some other platform because it just, and it was fine five minutes before I logged on and then it wasn't. So you need to be prepared and being early is one of the ways to do it. But also it's a way for you to engage your participants. You know, we always have people who arrive early, talk to them. It's a way to build connection. You know, if you're leading this for clients, talk to those people who showed up early, ask them what motivated them to attend this, how you might be able to help them start building that connection before you even start the meeting. And for those of you who are in leadership, you know, there's always, you know, the worst thing you can say, well, we're going to wait a few minutes while some, you know, we, you know, we're waiting for some other people to join. Start on time and end on time. That absolutely is one of the golden rules. You don't wait for the people who are latecomers because instead you want to engage those people who are the ones who get there early because when the latecomers come in, especially if this is a team that you're leading, they realize that they're missing something that motivates them to be on time in the future. Wow, that's some good stuff. I want to piggyback on that. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you where the geek's going to come out. Leave no, no. Leave me in Foursquare because I want to see your face when I tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Um, I so one of the other one of the other tricks that we found over time when you're having bad audio quality is not is not only all the things that Bernice said, but you actually can turn off your own video. 
So turning off your own video will increase the bandwidth for your audio to get through. So what happens is, where do you get? There you go. Perfect. That, that, I, listen, that is so good for so many reasons. <laughs> for those that couldn't see, Greg turned off his own video. But, but listen, in a data stream, right? So let's, this is where I'm going to break it down. And, and for you geeks out there, you're going to be like, oh, wait a minute. This guy has a little bit more smarts than he is. He, he's not only good looking. So <laughs> what happens is packets go across your Wi Fi and all, and all that stuff. And the quality of service on the video packets is always higher. They get, they get served up before the audio. So the reason why that is, is because it's, um, it's much more, uh, choppy. I, I don't know the way, the right way to say it. It's much more, it's much more sensitive to data loss, to packet loss than audio. So when you, so what, what's happening is when you're doing video and audio together, all the machines in between are saying, we got to serve this video up first video, 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 video. And that what happens is if it's using all the bandwidth for video, there's nothing less for audio. So your audio gets choppy. So what do you do? Get rid hmm. of the video, turn the video off. Now you're giving higher priority to your audio packets and your audio should be more clear. There's wow. the geek perspective. You like that? I uh, love it. Gene, I'm so geekier than you right now. My, uh, oh. uh, one of my nephews has been with Google for about 13 or 14, 15 years. He got, he started with him when he was 18. He finished college when he was 17 or something. But what he said, I, I asked him about, you know, the way that, why, why can't we get better sound quality from the internet as compared to an old fashioned copper wire? And what he said was the following. He says, all the data, you know, the data that comes across is broken into packets as you were saying, Gene, but then it has to be reassembled. And yep. there's no really, you know, and the packets go different places on the internet. You could have something going to an entirely different country before it gets reassembled back where you are. That's why there's a problem. So when you narrow down that bandwidth, You've got more room for the audio, which is the most important thing. Well, here's what's interesting, Bernice. He's he's 100 right about that. And if you actually look, so there's something there's a there's a tool in the IT world that's called a trace route. And what you can do is you can say, I'm going to send this packet to let's say just because you said it, Google.com. So for my PC, I initiate what's called a trace route. I'm going to trace the route of the packet. And you basically say, I'm going to put this information in the preamble, the information in the header, and have it send back. Every time it touches a device, send me back a, hey, I'm here. This is where I'm at. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. And if you watch over the internet, like when you talk about copper wire, typically there's a, a consistent connection from where you are to where the other person is, whether it's across telephone lines. But that's a consistent, uninterrupted pattern in a lot of cases. With the internet... If you did a trace route and watched where your, every one of your packets goes from your PC just to shop on Amazon, it'll go to Singapore, up to Canada, back down here, San Antonio to the data farm, up to California. It'll hit so many places in so many parts of the world so fast that you blink and you missed it. And that's kind of what's going on with all these packets that are going on right here. If you take a minute to learn out, learn about what trace routing is and figuring out how to trace route, if you're a geek like me, how to trace route from your PC... You will be amazed at how far these things go just to get to the end end destination. And for those of us who are realtors on the other side, though, <laughs> they ain't doing anything like that. Uh, we, got, we got super geeky. Sorry about that. Yep. <laughs> all all yeah. I want to know is why is my audio not working and what can I do to fix it? Yep. Leave it to Gene to hijack the show to talk about his packet size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got so many packets flying around. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, that is actually, actually really good information because it helps a lot of folks. Like, you know, like I'm sitting here like just dumbfounded listening to you two talk about packets and routing and you know all the rest of the shit you guys are going over. But it's very interesting to hear because it makes a lot of sense once you understand how your your video conferences and video calls can go, how how you can you know correct them. So. You know, Bernice, what's another thing that you're you know, that you're covering in your book that everyone should absolutely go to Amazon and get immediately as it launches tomorrow? Today we're recording on five twenty six of twenty one. Uh, go go to Amazon right now and, and grab a copy of this so you guys can run great team meetings or business meetings or whatever. But it's just great stuff. Well, I want to talk about a couple of things, Greg. But first of all, I want to talk about all the people this applies to. Um, the, uh, you know, if you think about it, it's anybody who leaves these type of meetings, but if you think about people who are educators, think about people who sell insurance, chiropractors, medical professionals who may be leading a class on how to manage your diabetes, um, 
people do charitable fundraising, people who run companies, people who run nonprofits, the list goes on and on and on. And this, from a marketing perspective, the book is something that you can share with them that can help them with what they're doing. And, you know, you can do this as if you're looking for a closing gift, you know, something that eases the pain. I mean, there's so much craziness out there with this. But the idea here is from a realtor, you know, from my perspective as someone who wants to help others, this is something, say, that I belong to, you know, I belong to a group inside the PTA where my kids go to school, we meet virtually, or if I have a book club, I might want to get something, I might want to get copies just or share some of the ideas from this with my group to make our meetings better. Um, the As the leader, I want to talk about a couple things from our six principles. The first one that is probably the, the two that are the most important to me out of the six are people listen for their reasons, not yours. So, uh, you know, I, you know, when you see, you know, I may be all of my content as I'm talking and I'm watching people in the chat, they're talking about other things. They're not listening to what I'm saying, but they are on that meeting for their reasons. So it's important that you understand what is wanted and needed by the people who are on that call. And to the extent you want to always keep you know, one of the things that happens to people, they get, you know, they get on these meetings, they get nervous and they're concentrating on themselves and they're all focused on what's going on. And what you need to do is turn the focus around and say, what can I do to best help my participants on this meeting? And what is it they want? That's the first thing. The second thing I want to talk about is this notion that people support what they help to create. If you are leading any kind of meeting where you're looking, you know, you have, you're have you a realtor who runs a team and you wanna get buy-in from your team members to do something, or if you run an office and you wanna get people in your office excited about something, ask for their feedback, listen to them. There's more wisdom sitting, you know, I've said this for years, I'm, you know, I'm an expert in this area of called real estate, but there's more wisdom sitting out there in that room than ever was in my head. And I have to tell you, for all the new agent meetings I have led over the years, I have always learned something from a new agent who has fresh eyes that was on went at least one meeting. So what that does for you is that you, you know, it helps you to build the real thing about, you know, doing really great meetings is the connection. And, you know, the great thing I love about when this kind of meeting that's going on right now, there's tremendous connection among the four of us that are on this, but you now want to build that connection with the audience. And those, you know, those two principles are really, really important. That is fantastic. I mean, that is, <clears throat> guys, if you just paid attention just to that one little snippet, you're going to change the way you do your meetings right right then and there. Um, gentlemen, Gene, Nick, thoughts on this one? Because I think, I know, I, I see Nick over here just twitching his toes. He, he wants to jump in. He wants to play hopscotch. So what's, what's I mean, up? I, I love I love the relevant timing of, of this book, right? And exactly what Bernice said. It, and we've talked about this before as far as, what we do as real estate agents and marketing, we're usually ahead of the curve, right? When it comes to technology stuff. So being able to help people in your market with something like this, whether it's Bernice's book or you take her concept and write your own version of it and hand it out to the PTA staff at your kid's school to say, hey, I do these virtual meetings all the time. I was just asked by another, you know, whatever. And now you're providing more value. Now they think of you, your branding can be on it. So like, from a marketing perspective, it's the lead magnet that could bring people into your world. And it's all about providing value of relevant things that are happening right now. Some people are freaking out about having to get on a video call because they've never done it. We've been on video calls for years. Zoom is not a new thing in the real estate industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for other people, it absolutely is. So this, I, I love the the concept behind it. And I think everybody should should have implement it for sure. Bernice, we, we haven't gone over what the name of the book is. Late great virtual meetings, the steps you need to succeed. <laughs> we should have co covered that in the very beginning. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we have to cut that back in some help. Uh, I want to piggyback on what I started to say, and then I kind of went off in a different direction, is the notion here 
of when you're leading a meeting and you're focused on yourself instead of your participants, that's when you get all this anxiety about leading. So when you make that shift from being me focused to being participant focused is huge. And one of the ways that you can do this is get rid of your I and me language. Stop talking about you. It's not your content that matters, it's your connection. It's your connection with the clients. It's the connection with the people who are your participants, whatever it is that you're, you know, you're leading. But when you focus on them, when you focus on them, that's when they connect with you. And that's the basis for forming trust, which means that they'll do transactions with you. That's a huge takeaway. Holy mackerel. Um, gentlemen. Bernice. Uh, let's go over uh, one or two more topics and then we're going to let Bernice get on with her day. She has a ton of editing to do because she, she and I, when I do our videos, I talk too much and she has to edit out 90% of what I say. I do not edit out 90% of what you say. <laughs> uh, I, I edit out about 50 to 60% of what we both say, to be perfectly honest, because we both. <laughs> That's because Greg's 90% are all F bombs. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? I mean, no, are you talking my about? Goodness. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Uh, we have a lady on the show, Jean. Keep your keep your mouth close, okay? My gosh. <laughs> like I haven't heard those words before. <laughs> <laughs> so Bernice, your mouth break. <laughs> well, it's burning. My mom is like putting soap in it when I can't even see her. Um, Bernice, what's one last takeaway that people should really kind of consider when it comes to you know getting downloading the book as soon as humanly possible, understanding how to run good team meetings and just video conference calls and everything else? Uh, it's really it's kind of the bottom line is really how do you build connection? And it's get rid of the I language and focus on you. In other words, focus on the participant. And when you're doing, for those of you who are real estate professionals, if you're out doing a listing appointment, a buyer interview, keep it. Don't talk about how great you are. And, you know, that's me, me, me focus. Kill it in your marketing, your print marketing, your digital marketing. Be focused on the person who is listening or who's viewing, you know, this, this particular meeting, be focused on your print marketing on the person who's reading what you're sending to them. It's about building connection and service that gives you a long lasting business with that, where your clients will refer other people to you. Perfect. Love it. Gene, give me a takeaway and then we're gonna go to Nick. We're gonna do takeaways and then we're gonna do a way to contact everybody. So Gene thoughts. Well, first takeaway is buy book. Right, number one. If you, For if sure. you are, yeah. yeah. If you are, um, if you're in the middle of these things, I mean, look, I, <laughs> we do home and school association meetings on on Zoom now, and the not the last one we had, but the one we had prior to that, uh, a, a mother and her husband proceeded to have an argument in the background on the sh on the call with seventy five other parents, and. I'm one of those guys where when I'm on a Zoom call, I'm on video. You got me. You see me. And I started to get text messages, people saying, this is hilarious. I'm watching you right now. I was dying laughing, and I was just waiting for something to come out that they would never live down, right? They were arguing about golf, and she was <laughs> giving it to him, dude, to the point where, like, here's, here's what was happening. They were yell talking to each other in the background and the two women that were running the meeting didn't know how to mute them. So, so what was happening was as they got louder, the person presenting was getting louder to try to talk over them. Dude, I tell you, everybody, the next day I saw them all at school and they were like, you were the funniest thing on that because I was dying, like on video, dying laughing. So get the book. Be aware of when your camera's on at what points. Um, you know, you should al always assume your camera and your mic are on. That's the takeaway. <laughs> so if you're on, with people, always assume it's on and double check and triple check. And if you're still not sure, shut the lid on your PC before you do something stupid in front of your coworkers or your co-parents. So that's the takeaway. Buy Bernice's book. Oh my God! Dude. You, remember, you guys remember a couple of shows, ago, uh, a couple of shows back when I was like talking into my phone, and you guys are like, uh, "Craig, your mic's on." Yeah. I'm like, and we're all like, oh, "Okay, shit. no, no, we're just doing this <laughs> <a> show." <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> I did not learn that lesson myself. So it is a it's a real thing. Trust me, <laughs> <laughs> Mister Sackus. What's up, brother? What's your takeaway? Yeah, one hundred percent buy the book. Second, I agree with that. Um, have headphones as a backup, and then third, have a plan, right? So that way you know what you know what can happen. Having the audio drop off is one thing. Know that you can pick up your cell phone and dial in if you need to. Have the headphones. Have a couple of different options. Um, we didn't even talk about this, but what happens if your meeting gets hijacked, uh, which I've had that happen, and having that plan in place of knowing how to pause the Zoom is a whole nother level of, uh, yeah. Wait, wait, hold on. No, 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 hold on. We probably have four minutes. You need to tell that story. Yeah, I'm, we, I'm we had women's, uh, women's Council of Realtors. We had about 60 um, agents on, and... We had the the, the sign-in gate there so that people had to actually register for the meeting, which is typically your first step, right? Make sure they register when they come in. Um, I didn't have the list. So here, as far as best practices, if you do have the gate installed, like have somebody register to come in, make sure you double check the list as you're letting people in because I started the meeting, a couple of minutes go by and I don't have the checklist of people who are supposed to be on the meeting. I don't know the attendees and I'm just letting a couple people in. And about five people came in about 10 minutes in and they totally took over the meeting, drawing craziness on the screen, like talking about just profanity and and, and ladies who uh, are an older demographic did not appreciate it. And there was a lot of shock and awe like the I, this meeting was the ideal meeting for somebody to take over and really shock people. Um, oh, no. so that was a good learning lesson on, there is a button at the bottom where you can pause everything to remove the people out of the group. Um, I ended up just shutting down the whole meeting before they took over the screen and showed a lot of profanity. Um, I'm hoping you have that, that kind of stuff can happen. And again, it's about having a plan. Well, again, you can have people enter, uh, with the, you know, there, you always want to have people enter the meeting with their, uh, with their audio off, you know, you, you turn it off and then you turn it on. Uh, when you want to and you do this you know i like to see people but if that happens if the you know if there is an issue with video you can just shut down their video and their audio and you can eject them but you can shut you know you can shut that down or you can go uh one of the things you can do if you get their audio shut down as you go from if you're on gallery view and zoom you go into speaker view and then you're only seeing the person who's speaking so at that point they can't they wouldn't be able to see you so if you just switch to uh speaker view and shut down their um audio you would have been okay good takeaways good takeaways bernice where can everybody get a hold of this book they have to get a hold of this book today it's going on it's going live on amazon tomorrow but they need to sign it's up for it right now. on amazon so oh uh, so uh, we're going, we're, you know, we're hoping to hit, you know, a lot of sales tomorrow because Amazon ranks you when you have a lot of sales one day, which we hope to do, uh, you know, get from, if you're buying on May 27th, buy on Amazon, otherwise visit our website at leadgreatmeetings.com. Again, that's leadgreatmeetings.com. You can order directly from uh, there. Um, the uh, book is available uh, to be ordered through your local bookstore if you want the hard copy. Um, if you want a, a digital copy, it's available. I mean, it's available at all booksellers, essentially, um, Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, again, local bookstores, they have to order it, but you can get it. So again, and we can get it directly from us. We like that because then we don't have to pay the middleman. That's <laughs> yeah, even better. Com. <laughs> I love it, guys. There it, there it is. That's where you get the whole of this book. Make sure you get it. Um, put, that up on the, put that up on the screen there. I'm trying. Okay. My God, so pushy. Uh, I just want you to cut it off. <laughs> so many jokes. You know, um, I screwed up. I should have grabbed my copy of the book. Hey. Gene, if people were going to reach out to you, not that they would, but if they would, how would they do that? Well, after this show, Bernice is going to give me a leadgreatmeetings.com forward slash Gene. And when you go buy off that link, she's going to give me a handsome royalty check. 
<laughs> which I'm going to take half of. Because I'm ordering, we're ordering directly from the publisher, Gene, and they're, they're Damn it, Bernice. no control over those guys. <laughs> Damn it, Bernice. Shut down. Hey, you, know, you, I, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I have to pay the same price. Uh, you know, I have to pay the same price as <laughs> does to get the book now. It's my own book. <laughs> Gene wants to lead great affiliate sales is what he wants. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 That's exactly what he wants. Sales. <laughs> All right, Nick, where, where are people going to get a hold of you, my friend? Yeah, so we uh, we just relaunched a Facebook group. I had Gene on this morning. Even Greg was sleeping when I invited you. I'm, I apologize because uh, of the time difference. It's a time. It's a huge time difference. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm relaunching my Facebook group. It's called Real Estate is a Joke. The lighter, quote unquote, uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but it's a place for top producers. If you want to grow, we're going to be doing a lot of special content in there with our boys here, Gene Volpe and Greg McDaniel. And maybe I'll be honored to uh, have Bernice one day, possibly share some content with us. That would be absolutely fantastic. But just search in Facebook, Real Estate is Joke. If you'd like to book an appointment with me to find out uh, how I can help you better your real estate career, uh, go to getamplifiedmarketing.com and uh, look forward to speaking with anybody. That is awesome. And Bernice, you know, I know we can get the book, but just uh, where can you reach out to you if they just want to get to know you? Uh, visit our site at realestatecoach.com and uh, uh, we've got, uh, we have a fantastic array of new agent sales training. Greg and I have done an experienced uh, agent pro, uh, program called List and Sell Real Estate. List and Sell Real Estate Like Crazy. This mm -hmm. thing is awesome. I got, you know, my best ideas, great best ideas, great stuff. And we also have a Listen to Learn program, which is like $97 a year. It has 104 of my articles, you know, 52 of the ones that are on Emin that you can only get if you get behind their paywall, plus another 52. We do a radio broadcast, a podcast every week. But then the thing that is really, I'm really excited about, we have a podcast library that's composed of different uh, kinds of real estate, you know, how to take a listing, how to market, you know, how to have a great life. These are all five to eight minute little training podcast and there's over 300 of them and that's all included that access you know you've got access to all of those 24 7. so uh for 97 bucks a year that's pretty cheap that's our listen and learn real estate so again realestatecoach.com and it's all there guys that's a treasure trove trust me it's very hard to stump me and she has been success successful in stumping me several times as we went through our training courses um if you guys want to get a hold of me and uh if we want to talk about anything exp if we want to talk about kind of what we're building over here feel free and reach out to me uh best number is gonna be 925 915 1978 um, but the most important thing that we need to do right now gentlemen as my two co-hosts gene nick you know your fucking jobs what colors are we putting on the bow I'm going to go royal blue like the cover of her book. Royal blue. Hey, okay. yo, I'm going YouTube red because that's the most uh, comments we had was through YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There it is, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening to our show. We truly appreciate you. Without you, we would not be here. So we love you to pieces and absolutely appreciate the shit out of you. Um, we want you to go to every place that you guys listen or watch podcasts. Give us a five-star, not a two-star review because that's our algorithm get... Uh, it's served up to more folks. And yes, I have one black glove because I'm trying to be, you know, Michael Jackson for some weird reason. I'm actually just stretching this thing out. Um, but we love you. We appreciate you. We have a royal blue. We have a YouTube red bow in the show. And until next time, peace out, ninjas. We gone.